uh, we'll start with a very simple thing that is the rearrangement inequality it's like this that if you have two num two set sequences of numbers a1 greater than or equal to a2 greater than or equal to a3 let's do it with three numbers for the moment okay we can do it with more numbers later let's suppose we have a greater than b greater than c in fact if you have any three numbers if you have any three numbers any three numbers one of them will be the largest of all which is which you call, you can call that a and then the other one will be the smallest of all you can call that c and the middle one is b now it is possible that all three of them are equal so what the rearrangement inequality is saying is that you can you can combine these sequences with each other and find the largest possible value so i'll tell you what it means so we have a greater than b equal to greater than c greater than equal to c let's write that one more time a greater than b equal to greater than c like this and if you multiply them in the same order if you multiply them in the same order you will if you do that you get a square and here you get b square here you get c square if you multiply them in the same order and add them up it will be larger it will be larger than if you multiply in any other order in any other order and add them up add them up multiply them in the same order and add them up that will be larger than if you multiply them in any other order and, uh, and add them up so what does that mean well any other order means maybe you multiply a with b b with c c with a that's a possibility if you multiply a with b you get a b if you multiply b with c you get b c you get if you multiply c with a you get c a and then you can just simply add them up so what the rearrangement inequality says is that this one will be always greater than or equal to this one in fact it says more if you add uh, multiply in any other order it says if you multiply in any other order so maybe it is like this if you have this now you can maybe maybe you multiply a with a but b with c and c with b you get so you get a square bc and again c with b is again bc this one you get a square plus 2bc actually what rearrangement inequality says is that a square plus b square plus c square will be greater than or equal to this quantity a square plus 2bc okay so let me write that and let then we can discuss why this is true so what the rearrangement inequality says the claim is this same order and get the and get the largest combination largest sum so the reason i write it like this is that the reason the the proof of this is really quite simple it's quite intuitive actually so in fact i'll not talk about the rigorous proof i will talk about the intuition what is the intuition the intuition behind uh, rearrangement inequality is like this suppose you have you are allowed to pick up 50 notes 100 notes and thousand notes and thousand notes of different denomination okay 50 notes 100 notes and thousand notes of different denomination and you the available denominations the available the available denominations the available denominations are rupees 10 rupees 
hundred. Uh, let's not make it hundred. It was five hundred, and rupees two thousand. So you are allowed to pick up fifteen notes of one type, hundred notes of another type, and thousand notes of another type. And the type of notes that are available are ten rupee notes, five hundred rupee notes, and two thousand rupee notes. Now, how can you make these choices so that you get the largest sum of money? So, make the largest sum of money. How can you make these choices? So, with raising of hand, can someone tell me what type of notes and how many of them will you choose? So, I see Tina has a raised hand. So, let's hear it from Tina. Tina, what do you think? So, we can get the largest sum by. Taking one thousand notes of rupees two thousand, one hundred notes of rupees five hundred, and fifty notes of rupees ten. Right, exactly. So you get the multiplier of in the same order, right? You multiply yes. is it in the same order? You see what I'm saying, right? So if you multiply it in the same order, the two sequences, the product will be the largest one. So if I make this in the algebraic form it will be a less than equal to b less than equal to c x less than equal to y less than equal to z to make the largest possible combination you do ax plus by plus cz multiply and add in same order multiply and add in same order that is the that is the intuitive reason why the rearrangement inequality actually works if you collect the largest number of notes of the largest value that's very clear if you collect if you want to make the sum of money largest you have to collect the largest number of notes of the largest value largest number of notes of the largest value and what we did is that we replaced x less than y less than equal to z by the same sequence one more time doing that what we got is the largest possible value so a square plus b square plus c square we multiplied it in the same order and then added it up that is greater than or equal to any other order. So AB plus BC plus CA. AB plus BC plus CA. Okay. So this is actually a special case. Special case of rearrangement inequality. So that's one of them. Now, remember, I talked about another strategy. The strategy is called squares are non negative. This is a very powerful strategy. It's very simple. The, simple, the simplicity of it should not deceive you. It's so powerful as well. So squares are non negative. What does that mean? It means that if if A is a real number, if A is a real number, then square of A, if you multiply A with itself, it will be greater than or equal to 0. Greater than or equal to 0. Now, this is a very, very simple but powerful tool to solve Olympiad uh, standard algebra problems. So let's look at one of the examples. Let's look at the same problem actually. If we would like to prove this thing, a square plus b square plus c square is greater than or equal to a b plus b c plus c a. a square plus b square plus c square is greater than or equal to a b plus b c plus c a. But we don't want to do this using rearrangement inequality. We do not. We do not use 
rearrangement inequality okay so let's hear it from uh let's hear it from shorodip actually go ahead shorodip what do you think yes so we multiply by two both sides let's multiply both sides by two okay that's great now we can uh, take all the two into a b plus b c plus c into the other side so okay so uh, we have two a square plus two b square plus two c square minus two a b minus two b c minus two c a greater than equal to zero we want to show this yes okay now we can write this part as a square minus two a b plus b square a square minus two a b plus b square plus a square minus two a c okay. plus c square let me yes. write it in the cyclical way c square minus 2 c a plus a square is greater than or equal to zero and but this is, these yeah. are perfect squares these are all perfect squares excellent so a minus b whole square plus b minus c whole square plus c minus a whole square is greater than or equal to zero which is which is obvious which is true which is true because uh all of these are perfect squares and sum of perfect squares is also non-negative perfect squares are non-negative means sum of the perfect squares is also non-negative in fact we can use this squares are non-negative strategy to talk about the cauchy schwartz inequality the cauchy schwartz inequality so let's quickly talk about it a little bit so here is the Cauchy Schwartz inequality. And uh, what does the Cauchy Schwartz inequality tell us? 